S, S2, T2. So we're part of the, uh, whatever standard that you use or you're looking at. Uh, Z-Wave integration, starting at $99 retail. That's a, that's a, a U.S. price, so I'll let you do, do, the, do the math to your, to, to your currency there. But a very exciting device, and uh-oh, I don't know why that didn't render correctly. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the benefits. <laughs> there, there's bullets that are supposed to show up there, but uh, apparently uh, something happened in the PowerPoint. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits to a device like this. Uh, it's compact, first of all. Uh, it's very low cost. One of the things that uh, is very interesting to consumers is because this has an integrated HDMI connector, which that may not be so obvious, don't confuse that to be a USB connector, this is HDMI, it is completely plug and play. The only cable that's required is in a non-MHL TV, you have to power it. And that's just through a small little USB connector. Most all TVs today have a USB that supplies plus five volts. So literally, it's a little pigtail that just needs to plug into the TV, and this is all that's required. So the customer gets a, they don't have another box they've got to fit on underneath the television somewhere. It's very hidden. Uh, it allows you to go into, if you're doing digital signage, there's many, many, many applications, hotel room, hospitality applications, where you can now retrofit with just this little box right here. Just plug it into your television, and you're ready to go. So a lot of advantages there. Uh, it's value added for the operator. Again, I apologize the bullets are not showing up, but uh, fortunately I, I, I remember what's on here. So um, it's, it's a huge value add for the operator because for one, you've got a very compact package to ship. If you have a retail strategy, this can go on, on what we call a blister pack, uh, small retail packaging, hang on a peg, and the customer takes it off, scans it, takes it home, and it's ready to go. So again, very, very convenient, um, very low cost. So to give you a point of reference, starting at about $99 retail in volume, these can be as low as $60, even under $60 to an operator, okay? And these are full DRM supported, 1080p, it's not a compromised solution. So this isn't, well, it's only 720p, and well, it doesn't support all the DRMs, and well, it doesn't work with HTML5, uh, like a lot of the other solutions that are out there when you get into the lower price points. So the Dune HD Connect family, um, and uh, it's too bad, my picture didn't show up. Um, we actually have uh, two versions of this, and then we'll get into uh, some a little bit more information here. Uh, there's a 3D version. So we fully support OpenGL, fully support MVC 3D, and if you have a strategy again of delivering premium content, particularly premium 3D, there's a 3D version and there's a just regular high definition version. So basically you as an operator uh, of services have the option to go with something that's very low cost, very compact, that fits your strategy. If it's based on more of a price point, if it's based on performance, you still can benefit from the size, still benefit from low cost, but you're not giving up performance. Now, we've got uh, some interesting extensions here that um, we're finding as we're doing projects all around the world that uh, in some cases, Wi-Fi is not the best uh, option for distribution of network signals. And uh, unlike some parts of the world that we operate in, not every home has Cat5. There isn't an Ethernet network inside the house that you can rely on. And so using uh, Powerline PLC, uh, which of course there's many PLC devices on the market today, uh, and this is completely, you don't have to use our brand, it's, it's a standard. Using PLC, you can actually distribute uh, to our device quite easily and create a full network in the house. So in some markets, this is becoming uh, kind of the preferred way, the easiest way without having to pull cable and, uh, and, and go through that expense. Now, more and more operators are interested in additional revenue sources. So uh, though it's interesting uh, to be able to grow your subscriber base and perhaps offer multiple packages, uh, to the extent that you can add services to that, that becomes even more interesting. 
And so there's some obvious services that we enable, and that is home automation. So using Z-Wave, Z-Wave is simply a radio technology. There is a wide range of Z-Wave devices. There's door locks, there's thermostats, there's light switches. There are uh, simple light switches on off. There's dimmers. There's a wide range. There's even security cameras. Using Z-Wave and a device like this, you now can not only monetize on your content, but you can offer a service to the customer. And you can go even a step further in that these services, something like home automation, is available outside the home. So your customer has a smartphone, an iOS device, or an Android device. Now they can be away from their home, like I am, in a whole other part of the world, and I can still see my security cameras, control my thermostat, turn lights on and off, look at the status of the house. And this is all a subscription-based service that we enable. And we enable this because we've integrated Z-Wave and because we have a, what's called a control point feature. So if this is uh, something you're saying, wow, that's a great idea, I didn't know that was available. Again, that's the innovation that when you go with a media player type approach versus a bespoke set-top box, you can benefit from this. Now, if you're designing bespoke set-top box, you now have to think about how am I gonna integrate Z-Wave? I've gotta design my control point software. I've gotta go through all the testing, all the certification. And this is something that uh, we're very, very heavily focused on. In fact, we're a member of the Z-Wave Alliance and very, very active in developing in this direction. Now, at this point, you might be saying, okay, I have a lot of questions, but you sold me, this is really interesting. I like the approach, but how do I get my service on your box? And uh, integration is, is sometimes the speed bump, as we say, in the whole process. Because frankly, there's some platforms that are easier to integrate with than others. And if a manufacturer has not offered the APIs and the SDKs, uh, and it, or if they're just simply not experienced, then uh, you might have a great hardware device, but your service isn't gonna work, or it's gonna be a poor user experience. So we've worked very, very hard. In fact, we have a whole engineering team that does nothing but integrations. And we basically have, there's really two main approaches. Now, uh, if you are familiar with these, then these block diagrams are gonna make sense. Uh, but let me just really quickly try and illustrate how the two approaches work. And then I'll cover the uh, quick, some of the pros and the cons. Uh, like anything, there's benefits to both. There isn't necessarily a right answer and a wrong answer. A lot of it depends on strategy. It depends on your own development resources. Uh, but there's basically on the left, there's a web-based approach, or there on the right is what's called a thick client. Now, thick client's kind of an IT term. It's kind of a, kind of a geeky term. But the web-based approach is, is quite simple. So uh, down here in this big block, we've got, this is the set-top box. So this would be this guy right here. There's basically a web browser that runs on that and it interacts with the video player with the codecs and it knows how to decode the video that's, that's coming, being delivered over the, uh, over the internet. On the, on the server side, which is basically this, this block, you have effectively a server and, and you might have a, a, a CDN that's delivering the content, but you have a server that's taking care of billing, it's taking care of subscription management, there's some application that's taking care of the CMS side, the customer side, but the UI is being rendered from the server. So just think of it as this is basically connecting to a web server, that's really what it is. But if, if you've not seen this approach and you're thinking, well, hang on, so am I looking at a web browser and I've got the menu bar and all this? That would be ugly. No, the engine behind it is a, is a web browser. But what the user sees is they have no idea that it's a web page that they're looking at. Okay? Now, that's the, the web base. And I, I, my next slide will talk about some of the, the pros and the cons of that approach. The thick client is, is very straightforward. Basically, there's code that runs only on the set-top box. So the set-top box has to be flashed or it has to have the user experience installed. It's running at the native graphics level of the set-top box. And uh, basically it's just interacting with the server for data, okay, and for content. So the, uh, some of the quick pros and the cons of the web-based approach are 
Uh, the, uh, some of the cons are that you now have a royalty for the web browser. So there's a little bit of added expense. You now have to think about, am I in a high bandwidth or am I in a bandwidth constrained area? because the box may appear sluggish in terms of the UI, but that has nothing to do with performance of the box, could be the internet. Those are some of the drawbacks. Some of the benefits are very fast uh, GUI development. You can just take any web designer who knows HTML and they can build your interface. So you don't have to have someone who's an expert in Sigma, for example, to build an interface. Okay, so very easy. And better yet, you can update at, at, at whim. Okay, because it's all happening on the server side. So you want to add a new feature, you simply 